Anambra State to partner TED Fund for critical education interventions. Oshimbajo comments uh, Saludo on transformational agenda in the state. President Buhari seeks collaboration for a better economic solution to all African countries. EU criticizes reported offensive by troops in Eritrean trigger border. Before the news in details, here is a special message. Governor Chukwu Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Nonye Mokoye. Now, Anambra State Governor Professor Choko Charles Saludo was in the presidential villa Asarok on a visit to the number two citizen of Nigeria, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The Vice President, who expressed delight on receiving the Governor of Anambra State, commended Governor Saludo for the transformational agenda he is bringing to bear in Anambra State. Press Secretary to the Governor, Christian Aborime, report. The duo later entered into a closed-door meeting for further private discussions. Before leaving the Vice President's office, Governor Saludo fielded questions from members of the press who sought to know the purpose of his visit. The Governor maintained his visit to the number two citizen was private. The Governor also explained the security situation in Anambra saying the state is now comparatively safer and peaceful with the security architecture being put in place. He again commended the various security agencies in the state and the people of Anambra for the cooperation and partnership in the fight against insecurity in the state. Governor Saludo also used the occasion to speak to the press on his six months in office and the massive programs, especially in the areas of road, health, education, power, and other critical sectors that have been aggressively executed in the state, assuring that in a few months, Anambra State will be one big construction site for massive development. Anambra State Deputy Governor Dr. Nyekachuku Ibezim has called on the All Progressives Grand the Lions Abga Faithful to support the present administration of Professor Choko Masoludo to enable it deliver on its mandate and maintain the name that the party has over the years made for itself across communities in the state. The deputy governor was speaking at Government House Oka during a meeting with some Abga stakeholders and ward chairmen from Oyi and Ayamelum local government areas. A Government House correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwo's report is here being presented. Deputy Governor Ibe Zim, while emphasizing on the need for unity and love among members of the party, said that they should prioritize the collective interests of the party over personal gains for progress. Dr. Ibe Zim further stressed that the party faithful should always abide by the tenets of the party and should follow lay-down rules guiding it, maintaining that the party is supreme. The governor now that is known for excellence. Oh, no, structure when you hear it. There's nothing to improve on. So you have come to improve on the structure rather than to scatter the structure. So all you are going to say maybe I can now see a chair. So let's stop this show of arrogance. Let's stop this show of unnecessary power. On his part, the State Commissioner for Petroleum and Mineral Resources, Barrister Anthony Fire, who hails from Ayamelum local government area, noted that the party members should avoid anti-party activities and work as a team in the forthcoming general elections to deliver all ABGA candidates for the glory of the party. It's important is that we should be united. If you are a true party man, you must accept the decision of the party so the party will move forward. Anambra State Governor Professor Charles Chokoma Saludo is seeking partnership with Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, to help the state's tertiary institutions on delivery of critical intervention infrastructures. This was the crux of the matter when the governor paid a courtesy call on the executive secretary of TED Fund, Sonny Echono, in Abuja. 
Press Secretary to Governors Christina Bori may report that the Governor said synergy between Anambra State and TED Fund will be highly impactful. TED Fund is a scheme established by the federal government in 2011 to disburse, manage and monitor education tax to government-owned tertiary institutions in Nigeria. Governor Saludo, who expressed his administration's dream of working with stakeholders at all levels, especially the federal government, who is a major player. The governor said that when all efforts are disjointed and unharmonious, the, de the deliverables will, be, will not be achieved. Synergy and coordination are imperative, said Saludo. I would like us to work together in a lot of areas we are interested in, and in a few years to come, we will be able to say that we delivered something tangible with the TED Fund partnership. He applauded TED Fund for its intervention project within the country, stressing that the Chukwemeka Odumegu Juku University, Anambra State Polytechnic, Anambra State Polytechnic, Mbako, and College of Education in Subi are desirous of such partnership. Mr. Echeno assured that he, they will continue to deliver on their core mandate of filling in the gaps infrastructure-wise in the tertiary institutions. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has urged the citizens to shun racial discrimination and embrace peace in the interest of and progress of development of the country. The commandant of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Anambra State Command, Commandant Isi Dore Chikere, made a call on the occasion of International Peace Day celebration and decoration ceremony of 67 officers of the Corps and the State Command who were promoted to new ranks last year. A correspondent, Chukwemeka Modelem, was there in our report. The United Nations General Assembly set aside 21st of September every year as a day devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace through observing 24 hours of non-violence and ceasefire among all peoples and nations, showing that peace should come before all other considerations. Delivering his address, which centered on the theme of this year's celebration, which is End Racism, Build Peace. Commandant Chikere stressed the need for all citizens to jettison racism and recommit to dialogue and promotion of tolerance, diversity, and a culture of peace building. The commandant made it clear that NSCDC is committed to creating awareness, seeking to address inclusion and tolerance, which help to end racism, promote equal rights and social justice in order to build a lasting peace in Nigeria. He appealed to all residents of Anambra State to assist the Corps in fighting insecurity by submitting reliable and insightful information for them to work with, even as he charged the officers promoted to new ranks to justify their elevation by displaying high sense of responsibility and eschew all acts of unprofessionalism. End racism, build peace. It requires the building of societies where all members feel that they can flourish. It involves creating a world in which people are treated equally, regardless of their race. In his remarks, the Zona Commandant NSCDC Zonke, Mr. Felix Oke, represented by the Deputy Commandant of the Corps, Mr. Uguogo Ezude, said for peace to reign in Nigeria, Nigerians must tolerate other people's culture and religious beliefs. What is this peace? Dictionary has several meanings for peace, but my own definition of peace is a domination of tolerance domination of uh, forgiveness. Where tolerance dominates in a relationship and forgiveness also dominates, there will be peace. In a lecture titled Racism and the African Development, the Nigerian Experience, a resource person, Mr. Ken Weze, explained that Nigeria can fight racial discrimination by adopting true nationalism as it can give every citizen a sense of belonging and make them to be more nationalistic than ethnic oriented in communities with entrenched ethnic crisis ethnic problems 
where you have multi-ethnicity, it is usually advised you employ the constitutionalism democracy, where you are expected to share things. Earlier, the command embarked on peace work within Oka to commemorate the 2022 International Peace Day celebration in Oka Chukwemeka Mordelim ABS. The President General of Umweri General Assembly, UGA, Chief Johnny Mechie, has been conferred with the Chief Tensi title of AZ Umweri by Igwe Beneth Emeka and the people of Umweri. The conferment, which took place during this year's Iwaji Umweri at the Igwe's Palace, Udaba Umweri, also saw the wife of the PG, Linda, bagging the title of Obidia. Our staff reporter, Angideka Okoye, who witnessed the event, reports that Chief Mechie was accompanied to the celebration by his wife, Linda, family members, business associates, friends, and well-wishers. After receiving the Azumeri Chieftaincy title, Chief Ambassador Mechie said he felt honored and grateful for receiving the Chieftaincy title from Igwe Mecca and Umeri Royal Cabinet, noting that Azumeri title was first given to his late father, Barrister John Mechie, and Igwe Mecca deemed it fit to give back the title to him. Chief Mechie stated that he has done many things for the community and beyond. Within the last hundred days, he became the President General of Umweru. He has empowered many youths, installed solar street lights in some streets, installed CCTV cameras in markets, churches, streets, and other strategic areas to assist the security of Ndi Umweri, provided vehicles to all the quarters in Umweri, updated and trained the security outfits of the community, and provided them with uniform, boots, raincoats, and CCTV walking talkies for better and easy communication. And the people appreciate what we have been doing, all of us, what we have been doing in the last 100 days. So they've given us the mandate to go on overdrive speed now, to take them on a different level. This is a teamwork. I need everybody to come together and join me so that we can fix this community. A friend and the national president, Anambra State Association of Town Union, Asatu, Barrister Titus Abudo, who said he came to share in the joy of Iwe Meka, his friend, Chief Mechie, and the people of Umweri, described the confinement of Ezumweri chieftaincy title on Chief Mechie as a well-deserving honor as people testify of his good works to the community and beyond. I am Others who spoke at the event, which featured capping and decoration of Chief Mechie and his wife Linda, as well as cultural dances, includes the principal of New Era Secondary School, Nteje, Lolongiru, and more, among others. From Umeru, Njireka Okoye. ABS News. Away now on from state stories, President Muhammad Buhari has called on African countries and their Arab partners to work hard and be more united to realize common objectives. According to a statement by the President's spokesman, Mr. Femi Adeshino, the President made the call at a bilateral meeting with the President of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, in New York, United States. 
President Buhari said the actualization of the UN resolution which proposed the two-state resolution to the crisis between Israel and Palestine required a platform to think creatively about how to engage the rest of the world on the matter. Meanwhile, the Nigerian leader also met with Mam Mamadou Isufo, a former president of Niger Republic and special envoy on the, of the UN, and the African Union on a joint strategic assessment and governance situation in the Sahel. At a meeting, President Buhari assured the special envoy of the support of Nigeria and the discharge of his assignment bordering on seeking political and economic solutions to issues confronting countries in the Sahel. He stressed the essence of a collaboration between the Lake Chad Basin Commission and the Green Great War. According to him, this is imperative in order to combat desertification spreading across some African states. Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer, Federal Government of Nigeria Power Company, Kenny Anwe, has said the federal government is committed to increasing Nigeria's current capacity of electricity generation from 5,000 megawatts to 7,000 megawatts by 2024. Anwe said this is part of Presidential Power Initiative, PPI, a program of the federal government that was set up to implement capacity development capacity improvement within the electricity space. It is closed this at a free fireside chat at the ninth edition of Nigeria Energy Exhibition and Conference 2022 in Lagos. And we said come 2024, Nigerians should be able to enjoy an incremental energy of 2,000 megawatts, first of all. Speaking on the structure of funding for the program, he said the funding arrangements is such that Nigeria would pay for the offshore aspect 15% as counterpart funds, while the financiers would bring 85% of the balance of the financing that is required. However, he said that that may not apply necessarily on the onshore side. On the foreign scene, the European Union says the reported movement of Eritrean troops into northern Ethiopian region of Tigray will only serve to escalate the conflict. It comes amid a reported full-scale offensive by Eritrean troops along the Eritrea-Tigray border. The Tigrayan forces spokesman Getachu Reda said the Eritreans were fighting alongside Ethiopian federal forces and regional militia. But neither the Eritrean nor the Ethiopian government have spoken about the reported entry of Eritrean forces. An American envoy condemned the fighting, noting that the U.S. was aware of Eritrean troops crossing into Tigray. Eritrea has been allied with Ethiopian government soldiers in their almost two-year long war against Tigrayan rebels. Thousands of people have been killed and millions have been displaced in the conflict. On Sports News, South Africa will beat to stage the 2027 FIFA Women's World Cup, hoping to bring the event to Africa for the first time. South Africa was the first and so far only country on the continent to host the Men's World Cup in 2010. In July, South Africa became African champions for the first time after beating host Morocco in the final of the Women's Africa Cup of Nations in Rabat. Almost two years ago, Netherlands, Belgium and Germany launched a joint bid for the 2027 competition and that will be among the South African proposal's principal rivals. A joint Scandinavian bid has also been floated, but with Denmark, Norway, Finland and Sweden bidding together to host the 2025 European Championship the continental tournament could take precedence. It will also leave Africa and South America as the only populated continent never to have staged the Women's World Cup. And that's just about it. But remember, you can follow news on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television, Oka. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. 
you can log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And the main news again. Anambra State is to partner TED Fund for Critical Education Interventions. Oshimbajo has commended the Saludo on transformational agenda in the state. President Buhari has sought collaboration for a better economic solution to all African countries. And on the foreign scene, we brought you reports that the EU has criticized reported offensive by troops in the Eritrean Tigre border. And the special message again, Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. We thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya Mokoye. Good morning and happy weekend. of the Nigerian arts and culture has greatly promoted culture and tourism in the country. Culture is a way of life of a given society and tourism is a vehicle through which culture is appreciated. In Nigeria, culture is reflected in all aspects of life, in arts, dance, folklore, language, literature, moral, music, governance, as well as the environment. Culture. Bo Omenana. Nibe Edemede, Naiven Duzi, O Ungalangwala, Eno Ungongo, Ejua Malo, Ibo, Momala, Oboro di Chicha, Uburu Abuna, eh, well in Keva Eko Buru Abuna Nada, Uburu di Cobu di Ke. In the Uruba, name Kivana Kunaya Kachama. In the way I name Kunkeva, Nakunaya Kachama. Oya Kulukora, eh, Oya Kulukora. If we gather a man near. So now, the arts and culture and the tradition and culture of Igbo land is so unique. I am a donor art we find Igbo I ne me puta kare. E wata go if I jiaka we ne me puta kare mostly Igbo. Then on like e to madu e me e ndi mochi e mwen. No marry if e ndi art ne me kare Igbo if e basalo if o me nani. According to archaeological findings, many artifacts excavated in Nigeria depicted the early life of the people of the Nok region in the northern parts of Benue River. The characteristic features of the Nok culture, which flourished from 500 BC to 200 AD, is the terracotta figure. Bronze sculptures in Ileife and Benin are seen as one of the most advanced cultural treasures of Africa. The oldest bronze are well over 100 years old and possess rich and masterful casting technique and an unusual sensitive realism. The arts and culture of Nigeria represents the intensity of the Nigerian lifestyle coupled with glorious history of the past. One of the major aspects of Nigerian arts and culture lies in the fact that they draw their inspiration from the rural traditional folk heritage. The Iwoku bronze works now in Anambra State, remains an important reminiscence of the ancient works of Nigerian arts. The bronze sculpture of West Africa is the evidence of the highly developed, magnificent artistic tradition in this part of the continent. The earliest example of cast bronze artifacts were found in Ibuku. In West Africa, the tradition of bronze casting reached its peak during the Great Kingdom's period. The hardest lost wasking technique were used for the creation of different items made of bronze. The lost wasking technique is a process of duplicating metal sculptures from an original one. Bronze casters organized some special formations and held a key position in the society. 
At that time, only a king was able to demand the production of bronze items and control the distribution of metal relics. The most popular bronze artifact then was the calabash bowl. It was commonly decorated with pyro engraved designs. The calabash, among other bronze items, signified royalty and respect as it was only made on the orders of a king. Ibuku is a town in Agwata local government area of Anambra State, Nigeria, in the southern eastern part of the country. Ibuku Mizuna, Aloriana. On only Ibuku, go this museum. Then I have a Chukubuna Umeweni, KFC, Ikenga Ibuku. Then all the shadow this museum, when you fear Naka, the government, Naka and Ibuku. Then Ibuku, where we're in Yanaka and the government. Then Walo say, Walo say this museum. Onye Bialo Commission Yabo, Group Captain Lufai Galba. Then on 21st May 1997, on commission and this museum. It is notable for three archaeological sites where excavators found bronze artifacts from a highly sophisticated bronze metalworking culture dating perhaps the 9th or 10th century. The first, called Ibo Isaiah was discovered in 1938 by Isaiah Anozi, a local villager who found the bronze works while digging beside his home. Formal excavation by archaeologist Thorsten Shaw in 1939 and 1964 at the request of the Nigerian government resulted to the discovery of three other sites, Igbo Richard and Igbo Jonah. This is where I've been talking about concerning the man that built the museum. And it was during that time bronze pot was brought in. The liberations were taken on what to do with it, and the museum was built and handed over to Ibufu, and the Ibufu people handed it over to government. Here are three men that the bronze pot was discovered from their compound: Ibo Isaiah, Ibo Richard, and Ibo Jonah. In the process of digging a well. They dug, dug out so many artifacts, but they never knew what they dug out. When they were contemplating on what to do about it, they decided to call a white man who was residing in Oka. This was the white man, Thurston Shaw. On close observation, the white man concluded that the artifact has been in existence after the birth of Christ since 9th century AD. Thus, that's how the Ibufu bronze was discovered. They started deliberating within themselves how this bronze spot came to be buried in the ground. It was explained that during the olden days, kings were not buried in a normal way. Rather, when kings die, they would dig and carve the ground. They believed that the kings don't die. The king will be buried in a sitting position inside the carved iron casket. Oh, if that bronze spot. When you look at this place, you will see the bronze spot. It was someone that molded and brought it to the museum. We have so many artifacts. But bronze spot is the bone of contention. The late British professor Thurston Shaw discovered that these sites contained a storehouse or shrine contained sacred verses and regalia, burial chamber of a man of considerable wealth and importance, the spousal pits in which pottery, bronzes and other materials had been disposed. These items revealed evidence of long-distance trading system extending to Egypt. Helicopter, 
Alice Apley started to study more about local Iboku population and their culture. She talked a bit about the arts, saying the inhabitants of Iboku had a metal working art that flourished as early as the 9th century. Three sites had been excavated, revealing hundreds of ritual vessels and regalia casting of bronze or leaded bronze that are among the inventive and technologically accomplished bronze ever made. Alice Apley also stated that Ibuku people were the earliest copper smiths.